Welcome to Das Geek. We are continuing our adventures with the Leon Lee TU-150 Mini Titan. So the Mini Titan is really a mini ITX machine that we've built around the Leon Lee TU-150 case that is just amazing. In fact, the more weeks I spend with this case, the more I fall in love with this thing. If you are at all interested in doing a mini ITX build, I cannot recommend this enough. Leon Lee is known for their attention to detail and some of the things I'm going to go over here, you're going to be like, oh, I've seen that in cases before and stuff, but it's just every little piece. The details are there and taken care of. It's the quality of the machining of the material and it's the ease of access and what most people would avoid a mini ITX case because it's too hard to get your hands in there to get components inside and everything is just too compacted, probably not well laid out. Cable management's a disaster, but that's not the case with the Leon Lee TU-150. As I showed in my prior video, you've got cable storage at the top, you've got cable storage on the side, but there's a specific detail I wanna show you right here. So during shooting of the video this week, I'm going to focus on showing some benchmarks and things. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, I'm not a huge fan of only using benchmarks. I like more real world experience stuff, but I will throw some benchmarks into this video here and there. But the thing I wanna call your attention to is this spot right here, because what happened during my testing is everything was going great. I was playing video games and I went with that low profile Noctua fan. It was a mistake on my part. It's really not Noctua's problem, although they, they <laughs> I think they should be very specific in their sales of this low profile fan that it's not really meant for anything other than very low power TDP CPUs and not meant for anything else. I really wanted to keep everything I was thinking in my head incorrectly, even though Leon Lee could fit these massive fans, I wanted to keep everything really clean and tight inside. So I went with the low profile fan and when I was running the test, the heat just went through the roof in my mind. It got up to close to 90, if it not hitting 90. I'll show you some of the screenshots here uh, during some of the tests, but certainly running in the heat element and not able to dissipate it fast enough where I would want it. So I needed to get back into this case that I just built. I needed to remove this bracket here. I needed to put back on the original AM4 brackets to put the Ryzen Wraith cooler on the system instead of this low profile fan. So I wanted to do this so I could continue my work this week in benchmarking. And it was so simple because of this cutout right here on the back of the motherboard. In addition, because the space, even though it's tight and small, was left open enough that I could reach in here. Look how much space they have to even put. I think this is a Dark Pro 4 from Be Quiet. Put this giant fan in there. So because of that, I had enough space to reach in. I had to get rid of the bracket, pull the CPU fan off, put the new brackets on and do that without taking the motherboard out and without risking damaging all the other components around it. And here you can see they're even doing comparisons against other aluminum surfaces versus what they do with their water wash surface and everything feels very premium. So I had to start the video out this way because I think that this case, instead of revolving around, or this machine, I should say, instead of revolving around the Ryzen or revolving around the NVIDIA, in my mind, the thing that I'm most excited about has been the Leon Lee TU-150. It's just made me so happy. So let's take a look at some of the work that I did this week in benchmarking and real world tests to show you what this baby can do. So what we have here is 4K footage. Now keep in mind, all different formats here. So you see the 3840 and you have the 4096. Then you have the different audio formats. Some have audio, some don't. Then we have the different frame rates and different sizes here. Mixed rates is much more difficult for a lot of video editors and machines to handle than if everything was shot consistently at the same resolution and the same frame rates, which is why Programs like Lightworks will ask you ahead of time if you want to use mixed rates. It's just going to be more taxing on your machine. What we're doing is we're rendering, rendering this out, and you can see we completed 
about five minutes of footage in a minute and 56 seconds in rendering this out. So I'm gonna do that same test again at 30 frames per second with all this footage and we rendered it out in two minutes and 14 seconds. So again, we're not overclocking this machine. We're not doing anything to push it to its limits, but we've surrounded most of the components in this machine are premium components. I say most because I have some issue with the ASRock motherboard in here while it is has premium components. There's some concerns with its overall quality, which I talked about in the first video. But still, you can see as we're scrubbing through the footage, it's doing a very good job, especially once it gets into one of those segments. You can scrub through that segment very easily. If you skip from one minute to four minutes, you have a little hesitation in between, but overall doing a fantastic job. Now, one of the problems I had when using Caden Live and Lightworks with the low profile Noctua fan was the temperatures. Remember, we're getting up to 94 degrees. So here is footage. Again, I'm running OBS at the same time here of me uh, doing the same rendering with 4K footage. And you can see our max temperature here is 80 degrees Celsius, but we're at a nice cool 64. So this is the actual test benchmark inside Lightworks itself. You can see it's testing the GPU transfer at 353 frames per second, GPU to host transfer 390, shader performance 32,944, playback performance 312 frames per second, render performance at 98.79 frames per second. So absolutely beautiful results here in Lightworks. Obviously you can render, you can edit footage on this machine, including 4K footage, although you're gonna have a much smoother experience because of the GPU being a 2070. If you went with a 3080 or something, you're gonna have a much smoother experience, obviously overall, but you can do everything you need on this machine and that's really what this shows. Now, I think the other star of the show here is clearly Sabrent. Sabrent has really blown me away, and I will show you the benchmarks here. This is another premium component running on the NVMe 4.0 PCIe, and a lot of people are kind of wondering when is 4.0 really going to show its capabilities, and I'm telling you, you can see them here with this drive. It's incredibly fast it seems extremely reliable and Sabrent is just making a fantastic name for themselves. I not only have the Sabrent Rocket, but I also have the Sabrent Q as well, which is a little bit cheaper. It's not running on 4.0, gives me a lot more storage, but all running on that NVMe M2. So it's just been a joy. So take a look at these benchmarks. I think you're gonna be blown away. I think it's quite amazing what it's showing here. You're looking at the difference in this between the Q and the Rocket, and you can see the Rocket is getting very close to advertised speed capabilities here in this benchmark using GNOME benchmarks. I'm just, I'm very happy. Leon Lee TU-150 case, blown me away. The Sabrent NVMe M2 drives, blown me away. Sabrent has made a fan out of me for sure. Here's some Tomb Raider benchmarks. We're on high ultra uh, settings here. We're switching between them. You can see as it goes down, that's an ultra, but uh, you know, those kind of benchmarks, whatever it can game, it can game over 60 frames per second. But this here is really interesting. This is Blender's benchmark system. And you can see we ranked in the top 55%, but this was when we were utilizing that Noctua low profile cooler when I switched to the Wraith cooler and ran the same benchmark here, we actually went up and ranked to the top 54%. Again, we're not overclocking, we're not doing anything special. I thought this was pretty interesting to see that we went up a percentage in total ranks of everyone's computer on here, going by the CPU, not the GPU. That's why the CPU is listed out there. And that's not just against Ryzen's, that's against all processors. I think we did pretty awesome there in that test and you could see how cooling can impact your performance. So here we have Everspace. This is a pretty cool space game. And you can see we have our graphics set to Epic and we're running at about 92 frames per second here in Epic mode, which is pretty awesome. If we take that down to the level just below that, we're running 120, 130 frames per second. So can this machine game? Yeah, baby, it can game. None of this cool stuff is possible without our sponsors, DigitalOcean and Bitwarden. Today, I'm gonna to focus on DigitalOcean. 
DigitalOcean has been a sponsor of the Destination Linux network near the very beginning of the network formation. I love DigitalOcean. We created, speaking of gaming, a Xenotic server for the DLN community. It's a completely open source free game you can get out there, even if you're not on Linux yet, because you should be. Uh, you can go out there and still enjoy gaming with the DLN community in this first person shooter. It's very much like Unreal. We made that server available using a DigitalOcean droplet. In fact, I did it myself and it was so simple. DigitalOcean has 2000 cloud agnostic tutorials to walk you through setting up all kinds of servers so that you can learn stuff. For the best part, if you go to do.co slash DLN, they're gonna give you $100 of credit that you can use for one giant droplet or a bunch of little droplets so you can do your own servers here. Node.js, Docker, Ghost, LAMP, WordPress, MySQL, GitLab, whatever you can think of, a Bitwarden server, for instance, to host your own passwords. You can do all of that on DigitalOcean. It can scale with you. So if you decide I need to take this into my business, DigitalOcean can scale there. They could definitely handle all of the traffic that you can throw at it. It's a beautiful service. It's super easy interface. And I couldn't be doing these videos and buying this expensive equipment if it wasn't from the help of my amazing patrons and the incredible sponsors, DigitalOcean and Bitwarden, the best password manager on the planet. So thank you so much to both of them. Let's finish out this video now with the rest of the benchmarks. Okay, so what this is, is our Geekbench benchmarks that we did here. I like Geekbench for their benchmarks that they do because number one, they're cross-platform, so you can use it on any platform. And what I have is multiple machines here, and one that you may find really interesting for those who've been with the channel for a while is this MicroStar. This is the Beast. You remember when we built the Beast? The Beast was a giant machine, thus its name. It had the 3900X, it had the Radeon 7, 64 gigabytes of RAM. It was a monster, 1000 watt power supply. We had like four SSDs in there, NVMe M2s in there. We, we had everything in this thing. And we also had a Sabrent drive, but it wasn't a 4.0 at the time and the close to a $500 motherboard. So when I talk about the best premium components, that's what we put in there. And you can see that in the scores. These last three scores that you see here are all on the Ryzen 7 3700X or our mini Titan in the TU-150. So obviously not at the scale of the beast, but we still surrounded it with some beautiful components and very respectable uh, scores here, especially when you look at the single core scores, very, very good. In the multi-core score, you could see that 3900X really shining. And of course we had the big giant Noctua fan on top of it, keeping it cool. And we did some of the overclocking in the MSI motherboard at least on there. So, you know, there's a lot of different variables here. We're not overclocking this machine when we're benchmarking it, but very respectable, great scores here in Geekbench. And I guess that comes all to say this, this machine here, the things that I, I wanted to try different components that maybe I hadn't tried in the past or that I had written off like ASRock. Now you guys know in the last video, I talked enough about ASRock. They, they had a fantastic components. They surrounded it with, their quality control needs work, but the things that really have stood out to me in this build that you should take away from it if you're interested in doing your own build. Number one, if you do a mini ITX, the TU-150 Leon Lee, oh, what an absolute joy. Number two, Sabrent drives, amazing. They are just super fast. I had the Sabrent drive in the Beast, as you remember, it wasn't the 4.0, but absolutely have had no issues with them at all NVMe M2s in here. Uh, both the Sabrent Q and the Sabrent Rocket have both been fantastic so far. And so I just, I'm really impressed with that company. The G-Skill Trident Z Neo, which is specifically made for Ryzen. What great RAM there. I was able to get it to the advertised 3600 megahertz, which was amazing. Cause as you know, uh, AMD can be very finicky with its RAM, but the Neo is specifically made for Ryzen and you can see that. So I'm very, very happy with the RAM here. And we have the NVIDIA 2070, which is an okay card. It it's really does a great job for 2K, 1920 by 1080, no issues at all. Obviously with the next gen NVIDIA release, look, it's, it's gonna be dated pretty quick because NVIDIA kind of competed against itself here. But all in all, those are the components that have really 
shined and blown me away. And I guess we can't go without mentioning the beautiful little muffin power supply Corsair SF600 because while the power supply is it's something that you generally talk a lot about or people get excited about, boy, it's been able to power everything inside this machine beautifully. So we'll probably do some more videos on this, but I have another laptop I've been wanting to get in your face here, a System76 laptop to talk about. So we've got some different videos we'll mix in between. I hope you're enjoying the mini Titan series here. Let me know in the comments below, maybe some of the different things you would have done with this build. Most importantly, I hope all of you are safe. I love your faces. Hit that subscribe button and then get out there in the world and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, thank you for watching this video.